Hey everyone, this is Rod White, and you're either listening to or watching The Rod White Bow Show. Hey everyone, welcome to the Rod White Bow Show podcast, and I am in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, and you're probably watching this on a YouTube, my YouTube channel, I hope you are. If not, you should subscribe to it. It's called The Rod White Bow Show, and you may also be watching on Facebook, and if you're watching on Facebook, it's probably been shared, so hopefully you can share it with your friends. There are two different pages that I have that I run this type of stuff on. One is the Rod White uh, page itself, and then there is the infinite archery page so a lot of the technical stuff that you'll see like this will be featured probably first and, and primarily on the infinite archery uh, page Facebook page but there will also be a lot of bow hunting information that in if it's general bow hunting information or has to do with bow hunting specifically with bow tuning broadheads etc that would be over on the rod white page most of the time so sometimes I'll share them back and forth so not to confuse you too much but if you're watching you're at least already most of the way there so what this episode is about is it won't be a very long episode, and uh, it is an old Kmart building in here, so lights will come on and off. It's not an episode of Netflix Stranger Things. It's just uh, we're in an old building, and uh, they're going to fix it up and do something really cool with it, I know. But for now, it's our tuning playground, and I have some high-speed video I'd like to share with you, and we're going to be headed to Foley tomorrow, probably. A lot of you are probably packing for that who are competitive shooters, ASA shooters, and um, those of you who are new to ASA, you guys are going to have an absolute blast because... It is one of the best run tournament organizations that um, is on the face of the planet, for sure. Mike Terrell, I believe, I believe you call him the president, uh, runs it and does a phenomenal job. And he's going to give me a boost base there. So if you're headed there, you can have the opportunity to shoot three shots through the high-speed um, video camera that I've got. It films up, up to 4,800 frames per second, I think. Uh, but most of it's usually done around 25 to 3,500 frames per second because you start to lose some of the resolution. And depending on what you want to film, uh, that rate gets boosted or lowered. Uh, most of what you're going to see today is around 1,800 frames per second, and it's mostly because of the daylight conditions uh, that were not present when I first filmed, and I had an older generation of this camera when I filmed these originally back last year. The two bows we're going to be shooting, actually I think there's three, maybe there's four, uh, three. Uh, one is a 2016 Hoyt Carbon Defiant Turbo with a DFX cam. Yikes. You'll see why in a little bit. And one is the 2016 Matthews Halen 6. So, again, this was done last year. There were a lot of updates, and I will tell you first and foremost, I am not here to pick sides about bows, bow companies, bow brands, aero brands, or anything else. Just here to inform, and um, I just like, I like educating people for sure on what's really happening without any sort of bias whatsoever. So there's no sponsors, no snake oil, none of that stuff here. Just straight up, what you're gonna see is what actually happened. Nothing's been Photoshopped. And they are, the bows that, I, well actually the one bow will be my target bow from last year, an indoor target bow. It'll be shooting, I think it's shooting a PS23 out of it or a Magnum, kind of irrelevant, honestly. And then the other, one, other two bows are going to be shooting uh, the exact same arrow at the exact same poundage, 70 pounds, 29 inches, put on a scale at lacrosse archery so uh, they can verify that this testing was done up there and uh, it is exactly what I said it was. The arrow is a 20 or a two, 250 rampage spine and it's got a 100 grain point in it. I don't know what the adapter size is. Most of it's honestly pretty irrelevant. So without further ado, we're gonna crank into this and I have it up on my screen here and I'm going to walk you through these shots. All right, so let's get into this. Here is the first comparison. This is side by side. There are a lot of things to look at because I want to keep this short and sweet. I'm just going to point out the major things. There is a major, major issue with that 2016 Carbon Defiant. And as you'll see here, as the arrow shoots out of the bow, you're going to see a lot of flex in that arrow. And in fact, at one point, you can actually see an S flex if you replay this video over and over again. You can see it up here. And I'll show you a little bit later in the video with a different angle so you can see that in detail. Versus the Halon 6, when it's fired, has a pretty straight knock travel um, path, which also generates, obviously, a very straight flying arrow. Um, and when I say straight, very minimal flex in the arrow whatsoever. There's almost always flex. Well, there is always flex in an arrow unless you're shooting some kind of a steel pipe. So there's both those bows in action. Again, there's a ton of information you could go through, but we're going to skip over a lot of that. And for all you who are... Hoyt lovers out there and think I'm beating up on Hoyt, I absolutely am not. That particular bow has some issues. 
I believe they've all been resolved from what I can see and what I've, and I haven't shot all the bows, but from what I can see at Hoyt, they've fixed a lot of those issues. Obviously the podium just uh, got rocked with Hoyt at Vegas uh, with their new bow that came out. I'm trying to think of the name of that one, Prevail. And it has obviously a different cam system in it as well. So those bows are back on the podium. Um, Matthew Boyd shot really, really well. Jesse Broadwater tore it up. Um, just didn't quite make it to the podium. So that's just the way that game goes. So looking at these two bows, I wanted to show you also a comparison of my podium that was shooting really well. It's a Podium X uh, 37 last year. And when you see it fire, you'll see that the knock uh, travels actually very straight on it as well. Um, there's, I am shooting down at about the same angle. So easy comparison. You can see the knock does come down out of the shot cycle, but the arrow travels uh, pretty doggone straight as it leaves the bow and as it moves forward versus the Halen, which is the exact same shot. It's a laser beam going right to the target. So um, very interesting piece of footage between those two. Again, I'm not here to bash anybody's bows, just here to help everybody out and help them understand their shot cycles with their bows and how to improve on them. This first video, I'm not going to walk you through answers and solutions to everything by any means, because I said there's a million things to watch, but uh, you can get a, a pretty good solid idea of some things that are going on. You can watch this video over and over again and come to your own conclusions on what you're seeing. In this next side-by-side -side comparison, we've got uh, the same bow, Halen 6, shooting the exact same arrows, everything is identical, except just to show you how much of a difference little adjustments can make. I moved the knocking point only a sixteenth of an inch up on the top uh, video and that string loop obviously correspondingly moved up as well. And if you don't put your string loop position in the right position, there are a number of things that happen from a parachuting effect of your string to your aiming ability uh, to hold on the center dot if your target shooter is affected. Uh, it also affects not necessarily your knock travel, but it affects the angle of attack I guess I would call it so watching the top one you're gonna see it exit out the bottom left side of your screen with a little bit more flex than what you see the bottom one and there it goes so this next clip is of a young man who came into the booth at the Iowa Deer Classic and wanted to shoot through the video camera last year and I marked his arrow in one inch increments just to demonstrate uh, to him that there's actually a difference in the time in which you rise the like if you set your rest up so that your fork comes into the full position fully upright position with only two inches left in your arrow that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to fall at the same rate because that's exactly what this bow does as you come in full draw it rises up uh, during the and is in the full upright position during the last two inches of draw length each one of those white marks on that arrow is one inch increments and so when he fires this bow you'll see that it takes uh, quite a bit more travel along that arrow rest before it actually fires. Now this is not an HDX model, so you'll also catch this arrow rest bouncing off the shelf as, he sh as the uh, arrow cycles by it and actually catches his veins on the back end. He shoot through paper. This bow actually looked really good through paper. We shot it through there, um, bullet hole. But the reality of it is, depending on where you're standing at whenever you do that type of tuning, there's a flex that's generally happening with that arrow. And now you see the HDX pop back up and then boom, hits the bottom vein. Vein recovers by the time it goes through the paper, so everything looks good, but in reality, it's not. One of the things you can see on the high-speed camera if you uh, get a chance to meet me at any ASAs with it. The next clip, this is uh, back to the Hoyt Carbon Defiant Turbo, uh, which is on the top, and the Halen 6 on the bottom. And this is just a look at the flight difference of what's happening. There's actually two different points uh, distances I think the one was at 8 feet and one was around 13 feet in which a perfect bullet hole went through the paper but as you'll see it's not a perfect uh, flight pattern coming out of the bow that's why paper tuning is gets you close but not perfect you can see the arrow cycle quite a bit as compared to the Halen down on the bottom so this is the uh, 2016 spider again up close I just wanted you to see that uh, kind of train wreck that happens as it fires they did a great job with the flex guard here. It doesn't come in contact with the arrow at all. The arrow touches absolutely nothing coming out of the bow, although you'll think it does. It's actually a reaction from um, the S whip that's being produced in that arrow. Again, this is a, not an underspined arrow. This is a, the, uh, this is a 250 Rampage. Um, if anything, it's a little bit stiff for this bow. 70 pounds, 29 inches. And as you see it leave the bow, here comes the incredible wave 
through the arrow and then as it tries to correct itself with the veins um, there is crazy stuff that happens absolutely insane I got no words that's just a <laughs> that bow was something else and uh, it immediately went to eBay so uh, it's long gone out of my life but the new stuff they have is very very nice and I have no issue with whatsoever so I hope that helps uh, you start to think or get to think about how your bow and arrow system works and how they react with one another and what may or may not be happening with your bow. And it's very difficult to uh, see any of that stuff unless you're watching in obviously a super high speed camera. So again, hopefully we'll see you guys in fully uh, in the next couple of days. I think today's Tuesday and um, I was going to kick this out on Monday, but had a little shoulder, shoulder issue I'm dealing with. So that's a wrap on the video stuff that I'm going to kick out to you right now. And I've got lots of this stuff coming in the future. And the uh, cool part is most of it's going to be in color after this. But there's a lot of information that can be gleaned from this experience, obviously. But there's a lot of stuff that could give you a giant headache if you think about it too much. So the uh, only thing I can tell you is hopefully I'll see y'all in Alabama. i got my y'all going since I'm headed south. And you'll get an opportunity to shoot through the camera and see what your bow is actually doing, especially those of you who are shooting blade rest may be very intrigued to see what your blade does as your arrow courses across it. Um, in some instances, it's pretty wicked. In other instances, it's perfectly functioning as it should. So, so many things to look at, so little time, and I am out for this podcast. Have a great day. See you all in Foley. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, like my pages on Facebook, Infinite Archery, if you like a lot of this analytical stuff. And if you're just into bow hunting, then uh, check out my other page, Rod White, where you'll get mostly bow hunting information at. And maybe someday we'll combine the two. But for now, peace out from South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. See ya. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Rod White Bow Show. To help me keep more content like this coming, I would be super appreciative if you could subscribe, like, and share this episode on your own favorite social media platforms. And as always, feel free to make comments in the section below. By commenting, you're not only giving me more direction about the information that you want me to deliver to you in the future, but you're also helping me reach more people just like us. And as a thank you for your support, the first 50 people that sign up after the show for my new online course, 60 Day Elk Training, will receive a free extinguisher game call valued at $29.99 with an instructional DVD where I walk you through how to communicate with mature whitetails and bring them tight into bow range. Thanks again for tuning in.